The power of Christ compels you. 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 Hello, welcome back to Deep Eye TV and welcome back to Discussing Things Films. This is part three. Before I get started, please consider liking and subscribing because it really helps the channel out. I'm in early days, but I want to improve on what I've already got. So today we're going to be talking about a film that I saw when I was 19, I believe, on Channel 5, about nine o'clock, something like that. And I was blown away by it. I know I say that a lot, that I get blown away by things, but I was, yeah, I, I, I couldn't believe, it was the first time I'd, I'd seen a film like this, really. And that film is The Godfather, part one. Now, I know there's a lot of people that think part two is a better film, and I can see why they say that, but I've always preferred the first one, just because of the fact that, like, it feels like an origin story. It feels like a kind of gangster slash coming of age slash no matter what I try to do to get out of something I'm not going to be able to escape this sort of story and um, it was released in 1972 and it was uh, based on a novel by Mario Puzo who also wrote the screenplay and it was directed by Francis Ford Coppola um, who has who went on to direct films such as Dracula uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, that is. And, of course, Apocalypse Now. The story centres around the mafia family of the Corleones, who is headed up by Vito Corleone, who is played by the late, great Marlon Brando. Um, his eldest son, Santino, that's shortened to Sonny, played by James Kahn of Misery fame. And the film mainly focuses around the youngest son. There's also... Uh, Tom Hagen who's played by um, Robert Duval, who's the consigliere who's like the advisor to the Don um, and he's like an adopted son and then there's the other son which is kind of a bumbling character played by uh, Joe Casale and that's Fredo but the, but the story is mainly focused on Michael Corleone who's played by a very young Al Pacino and it kind of shows you how because Pacino's character is essentially he's a citizen he's gone and fought in the army and he he turns up at um, his sister's wedding who's played by Talia Shear who is I believe the sister of Francis Ford Coppola and for those of you who don't know is Adrian from Rocky and she she's getting married and he he turned he, the family will turn up and he he brings his girlfriend along with him who's played by I think Diane Keaton and he says to her that's not my life that's not why I want to be and you know circumstances happen I'm not going to go into too much detail about what actually happens because I th the whole point of these is just to for me to get off my chest my feelings about these films games and tv shows and I want people to go out and watch these things but it turns out that he can't escape, that circumstance puts him into the family business, so to speak. And I think what drew me to it is because, you know, it was very different. It was, I'd heard about it a lot when I was younger. You know, a lot of people used to talk about The Godfather and reference Godfather and like, you know, rap music would reference films like The Godfather. And then when I finally watched it, I was like, this is not what I expected it to be. Yes, it's gritty and it's got that kind of like stuff you'd expect to see in Goodfellas and The Sopranos and things like that, but it's like an oil painting. Like an Ita like a Bay of Naples oil painting where it's ju it's just elegant. It makes ga it, in a way it's kind of, uh, it's, it's not it's, it might be seen as a bad thing, but it looks at it makes gangster mm -hmm. culture and the and the mafia look like an elegant piece of art, you know, like it feels like a waltz. The way that the film is with the soundtrack, Nino Rota, Rota's soundtrack makes it just feel like you're elegantly gliding through this family's life, you know. Um, and it and certain scenes, the way that they use kind of like dark colors mixed with like kind of blood orange and that kind of thing, it makes it feel very Neapolitan and. 
I don't know if, that, if uh, forgive me if I pronounce that wrong, but it makes it feel like an oil painting. It looks like it looks very artistic, um, and that's something that kind of goes throughout the trilogy, even in the third one, which isn't very good, but it it goes through that. And as I said, the second one seems to get get more plaudits, and that's that sort of shows more of Marlon Brando's character's background. It's it kind of flips between Marlon Brando's character as Robert De Niro as him younger as Vito Corleone younger and the present day of Michael Corleone taking over the family business essentially. So spoiler alert. I think Gordon Wallace's Willis, sorry, Gordon Willis's cinematography is absolutely outsta- outstanding in this film. Like I said, it, it literally is like an oil painting. Um, in terms of awards, it won Best Picture. Adapted screenplay and best actor at the 1973 Oscars, and you can see why. And like I said, when I first saw this film, I was kind of like, "How have I not seen this before?" I think I must have watched it three, watched it three or four times on the bounce. I used to have it on a taped VHS that I just taped. Off. I shouldn't be saying this in public, but yes, I taped it off of the TV. Um, but don't worry, I brought the. Uh, I think I had it on on official VHS, and then I brought the DVD. And now I have it on Blu-ray, so I have given Paramount their money back. But yeah, it's 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 unbelievable, you know. As I said, it's it is like a majestic view of gangster culture. It doesn't have the same. If you look at a film like Goodfellas, for example, Goodfellas has kind of a mixture of of that and what you see in The Sopranos, but it's it's less elegant than The Godfather. Whereas The Sopranos is proper, kind of like on the floor, kind of you know, gangster culture, mafioso culture. Whereas, and as I said, The Godfather doesn't really have that. It's It literally is like you're moving majestically through this movement, this musical movement as you move from scene to scene. And it has the, it has gritty moments, but it still feels like it's an, it's a, it, this kind of like weird sort of surreal, dark waltz, this noirish waltz that you move through. The kind of legacy of The Godfather is that it's influenced a lot of music, particularly in rap. It's, it's influenced a lot of people, kind of that lifestyle, that kind of like, you know, dress dress smart, but like killing people behind the scenes sort of thing. You're there with your elegance and your your family and your big house, but really you're, you know, causing, causing trouble, making people fear you. Again, as I mentioned with... Um, the soundtrack, like I think one of the most iconic pieces of music ever comes from The Godfather, even much so that I think it was based on the theme music. As a wrestling fan, I would know this, but the, it was based on the music of the Mamelukes, which was the tag team of Big Vito and Johnny the Ball Stamboli, who were like sort of like mafia heavies. And they had The Godfather music as their their uh, their entrance music or something that sounds like the godfather's music but you can definitely see where it came from and i think even before i saw the godfather i heard that and i was like what even i was like what is that music and then eventually i saw the godfather and saw oh it's come from that there was also a video game released in 2006 as well which i did buy because i was a huge fan of the film um i remember you know when the trailer came out for it and it was you know a, a cgi version of Marlon Brando as Don Corleone doing his famous line. Someday, when that demon never come, I may call upon you to do a service for me. But uh, until that day, please accept this as a gift. And I was like marking out like a 12 year old girl. I was like, oh my God, they're doing a godfather game with like the like some of the original cast i think james khan was in it and some of the recordings were done by marlon brando for vito corleone and robert duval came back it was a decent game i felt that like it, this is the problem with bringing back actors from you know a bygone era is that like they you, you see the face and the face looks young but the voice is old like for example when from from russia with love when they brought sean connery to do the voice of james bond for the game and it just sounds like, you know, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Finding Forrester, Entrapment, uh, Sean Connery, and not James Bond, Sean Connery. So, yeah, but it was it was still good. It, I still enjoyed it. I got quite far into it. But yeah, the, the film is just unbelievable. 
you know, I think it's probably one of my favourite gangster films. It's up there. Well, things like Goodfellas. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to it's hard to top. The only thing that's come close to it so far, and I haven't even finished the series, is The Sopranos. Um, but yeah, I love The Godfather. When I was watching scenes back for this and doing my my research uh, the other day, I was thinking to myself, I love this film so much. Like just the colours and the and the, the the just the use of like light, light and dark and the kind of it's just immense. Just really, really good. So yeah, talking about some of my favourite scenes from the film. The first one being about forty five minutes in, so half an hour to forty five minutes in, where uh, there's been an attempt on the life of Marlon Brando's character Vito Corleone. And at this point, there's a sit down with Michael Corleone, who at this point hasn't had nothing to do with the family business. And the person that they believe to have taken out the hit, this guy called Virgil Salozzo. He's also joined by someone that's been paid off by Salozzo, which is uh, the police commissioner or something like that. McCluskey, I think he's called. And there's a, again, this is something that, that's really well done in this film the the tension that builds up so he he's basically been planted in there the gun has been planted in the bathroom and he has to act all normal and at some point he needs to say oh i need to go to the bathroom he goes to the bathroom gets to the gets the gun and he's meant to kill them all he's meant to kill them both and there's a bit towards the end of the scene where he, it's almost as if you can see in Pacino's eyes or in Co Michael Corleone's eyes, you can see, am I going to do this? And in the end, he decides, I've got to do it because otherwise this won't end. And yeah, and that's kind of like the turning point. That's that's one of the main turning points where you realize, you know, he can't escape this. One of my other favorite scenes of this film is... Uh, sort of near the end when Michael has sort of taken over um, the business and he's at a christening of his nephew who's incidentally called Michael and in the background and it flipped the camera the camera shoots between stuff going on outside of the church and in the church and at this point Michael has taken the law into his own hands and he's dealing with all his enemies in the only way he thinks logical and uh as you do in a baptism the priest says michael do you renounce satan etc etc and he's as he's saying i renounce them it cuts to these things that he sent out to be done and again it's another turning point where it shows he's ruthless possibly even more ruthless than his father and it's it's brilliant and i guess the the other scene that always sticks out to me in this film is this is the opening scene where um, somebody comes to see Don Corleone and wants him to do untoward things. And it's just kind of introducing you to this world, this world of Don Vito Corleone and what he gets up to. And it's kind of like this really, it's meant to be a day of celebration. It's the day of his daughter's wedding. And uh, he's still working. He's still sat there taking requests from from people, essentially. Um and he's sort of explaining why you don't want why the guy doesn't doesn't want him to be a friend because he'll get caught up in all of this kind of stuff. And it's yeah, it's brilliant piece of acting. It grabs you as soon as you start. Essentially, brilliant. Yeah, powerful stuff. One of the greatest films of all time, definitely. Anyway, thanks for listening. That's my thoughts on my little diatribe on The Godfather. Up next is the next episode of Discussing Things Games, which will be on GoldenEye007, so look out for that soon. As I mentioned on my Instagram the other day, we're going to be doing some coverage of Arsenal's preseason in the new season of Armchair Armoury. And I'm going to be doing more playing things playthroughs soon, so I'm in the middle of doing Star Trek, next, the next generation of Final Unity at the moment then I'm either going to move on to the new Ratchet & Clank game or Medium. That might change, I don't know yet, but we'll see. 
So keep up to date by subscribing and liking. Um, follow me on Twitter at PI underscore FOG and uh, keep up to date with everything that I'm doing. But yeah, as I said, thanks for listening. I'll speak to you again soon. Until then, take care. Stay safe. This is DPI signing out. Hashtag.